Eating meat is pretty tasty, so it's no surprise that most people do it. You probably do, but are they making a mistake in leaving half the human race enslaved by patriarchy? And Alessio Parson is a sociology professor at Penn State University. She's sitting right next to me on the set right now in a recent piece for something called the Journal of Feminist Geography. Professor Delessio Parson says that eating meat entrenches hegemonic masculinity and that for women going vegetarian, quote, pushes back against the patriarchy and may even eliminate the gender binary itself. Professor Delessio Parson joins us tonight. Professor, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So you wrote this in the Journal of Feminist Geography. My issue did not come, uh, so I haven't seen it. But tell me. I can send you a copy. (laughs) I can't wait. (laughs) You say that vegetarianism uh, helps women push back against the patriarchy and makes men more egalitarian and respectful. How does that work? Yeah, I mean, so that's not a direct quote, but that's, that is very well summarized. Okay. Um, so you must have good people working for oh, you. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so what, how, how do you connect eating meat, carnivorous behavior with the patriarchy? Well, I said I brought you a gift, right? Yes. Use your imagination. Okay. And I think this book might help. Okay. Okay? So I read it this year. Have you ever heard of Octavia Butler? No, never. Oh, do you like science fiction? Oh, tons. Yes, you do? Yeah. Okay. So I have a book um, by Octavia Butler called okay. Lilith's Brood. I can't remember. This camera? Lilith's Brood. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's like a dystopian feminist novel about Oh, men. it's... No, no. No. <laughs> You gotta read it. It's to about find carnivores. Out. You gotta read it to find okay. out. Okay. Right? Well, tell me, how does do you think that being a vegetarian helps defeat the patriarchy? Well, wait. First, you gonna read it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so then Come on. Yeah, of course. Okay. Thank you. All right. And this is the one I'm reading. Okay. And for another partial response, check out this one. <laughs> Good. Um, so we've we've sold a couple of feminist books here on the book club. They're not just but t- feminist. <laughs> they're, but they're tell me, let's get to the nub of it. How I eat meat. Yeah. How am I perpetuating the patriarchy by doing so? Well, like, okay. There's a, several ways. Um, one of the ways in which we perpetuate patriarchy is when we take up a little bit too much space. Right. And eating meat is a diet that um, requires more space on the planet. Well, that, right? okay. It requires more resources to produce meat than it does to produce plant-based food. But what does that have to do? I understand that. And I know the environmental so argument one against yeah. eating meat. But you seem to suggest in your piece that there's something about meat specifically that makes men dangerously masculine and that men who refrain from meat become easier to deal with or as Wait, you put Tucker, it more you just, egalitarian I seem to say in my piece you said you didn't read it yet well I have the summary right here well you got you didn't read my words well I think they've got quotation marks around oh it. okay do you believe huh. that eating meat makes men more masculine why are you um I guess I'm wondering why you're so concerned about like men becoming more or less masculine <laughs> I feel like this. Are you really a professor? Because I feel like this may be a performance art. <laughs> What's performance? No, no, no. I'm a professor. Okay. I do. I believe though that when you come together, two individuals come together. Right. Um, you co-produce knowledge. Okay. So you were saying before you didn't finish college. You co-produce knowledge. Yes. So you tell me this. If I stopped eating meat, would how would I be better? I don't think it's about better or worse. Right? Okay. I think it's a question of how much space are we as individuals taking up. So how much space are we taking up when it comes to what we consume? The tea we drink, I really like tea. Um, oh, I had a package for you, I'll give it to you later. Okay. Um, the things Let that me we just ask you this really put on quick. our body and what we put in our households. How much space do you we take up? You promise you're a real professor? Yeah. Okay. What we does ch- it mean to be a real professor? <laughs> oh, no, um, this I is, teach getting, this I is teach getting too deep. I'm going to ask you one last final question, yeah. which is... Um, I'm getting the sense from what I have read, whether or not you wrote it is another question, but I think that you did, that when men stop eating meat, they change in ways that you think are good. Is that true? I think it's helpful that that men stop, that all people consider how much meat they, they choose to put in their bodies. I'm not here to mandate anything, right? right? We all make our individual level choices. Our individual choice is incredibly important, right? Okay. Adam Smith. Yes, Adam right? Smith. We were just talking about in the green room. I will say I've, so. I come away with two strong impressions from this interview. <laughs> One, I like you more. Really? But I know much less. What does that mean? I don't know. Will you have me it's back a, to discuss our books? It's a paradox we can talk about. Professor, thank you okay. for joining us. All right.